Okay, so in this video, let's try to get more than one tab in our browser and let's learn to navigate through those different tabs. Let's go ahead and create a brand new file here. And I'll just copy and paste most of this. Again, we're gonna start by requiring Puppeteer here. We'll open a browser window. Well, not the browser window, but the browser itself. And in that browser, we're gonna add a new tab. So once we do this, this page is basically that new tab that was just opened. Now let's try to go to a page. So I'll just go to this page right there. And for now, I'm just going to comment all of this out. So for the time being, if I run this, it should just open a new tab and open this particular website in that tab. So let's go ahead and run this. So I'm gonna do node and then this file name. You can see that opens this, creates a new tab, and that opens this new page in this, right? That's pretty much where we are. Now, I could go to this website in here and then we could just go ahead and open another page. So I'm gonna do a page two, for example, and then that's gonna be my new variable. So therefore, this is gonna be page two, two. And in here, let's just go ahead and open a different page here so that we can see the difference. So let's say we wanna open this one. So here we go. So now what should happen, we open the browser. Using that browser, we're gonna add a new tab. In that tab, that's gonna be this page, we're gonna go to this particular website. And then using that same browser right here, we're gonna go ahead and open another page and we're gonna save it in this new variable page two. And then in that page two, we're gonna open this other link. So let's save this and rerun this same thing. So there we go. Now you can see I got this one. I also got this one. And then there's also this one, which is initially just a blank page with no tabs in it. Let's go ahead and quit out of this. Now let's try to go and see how we can now, once we opened multiple pages, navigate through those different pages. Now, if we already have it saved in a variable, we should be able to probably use that variable to do something about it. So for example, this first page is saved in a variable page. So let's see if there's a method that can just basically activate that one. Okay, so let's go try to look up some documentation. So again, I'm gonna go to their website. Let's just look, that would be a page object at that point. So let's just see, we have all of these different events. We just want to look at methods and maybe here I can see better. So nothing on the page that I can see. Let's look from the browser side. So I'm gonna go to the browser here. We have the browser. Now on the browser, let's see what methods we have. We have the new page, which is what we've been doing. Pages, which will probably give us the pages that are currently active, which we will probably use in a second. But let's see if there's anything else here. So I have a feeling it should be on their page. So let's try it one more time. Maybe I didn't see it. Uh, maybe I should read this a little slower. Bring to front, maybe that's the one. Yes, that's a weird name, but that should work. All right. There it is. So that should activate this first page. Let's try this, save it, rerun this thing, make sure this works. Okay, there it was. So we went to the first one, we created a new tab, then we opened the page, then we came back and activated this one. So that's how we can basically activate one of the tabs. Now let's say you got one of the tabs by clicking one of the links that was on the page, 
instead of this, and you don't really have this variable page to be able to pinpoint to the tab you want to activate. So I'm gonna comment this out. So there was this thing when I was looking through that just a second ago, if I take a look at this browser, it had this pages. So see, that seems to be bringing an array of pages. So we're gonna await for that. And then we're gonna save this in a variable. And then in that variable, well, that's gonna be an array. So let's just do a for each loop. And for each tab, oh, I'm surprised that autocomplete actually worked here. So if that's one of the pages, let's see if there is something like the name of the tab that we can get here. Title. So let's just try to console lock this. So let's go ahead and rerun this to see what we get. All right, so while this is opened, because I'm not closing the browser, let's go back here and look at this. So it says function, function, function. So apparently the title was a method, not a property. Let me just quit this. So let's just do this. And apparently that returns a promise. Okay, so... So we cannot use this for each on this. I'm gonna change the technique here. Let's just do a for loop. All right, let's try to go back. Now, if you look here, what I have printed, the first one is, see the space? That's blank. This is this first one. It doesn't have a title. Then we got the second one, all products. And then we got this third one, which is this travel book. So we loop through these different things and it goes in the order. So the last one that was opened will be this travel one. So now we could go through these using that array of tabs. So for example, if I wanted to open the first tab, I can do something like tabs zero, which should be basically the first tab. And here I'm gonna do that bring to front to activate that first tab. So now if we run this, what should happen, we should be able to open this page, then open this other tab, and then activate the first one, which is basically blank. So I can just go ahead and reopen this. And see, we went back to the blank one. And if we wanted to, we could also load something in that first one, because that first one now is gonna be this tab zero. Now we probably, instead of just keep saying tab zero, we would save this in a variable, but for now, let's just take that tab zero and then inside of that, let's go to, this is gonna be basically a page in this case. We can go to another link, which will be this link. So I'm gonna wait for that too. And then let's save and rerun this. And there we go. That's great. Now, what if we wanted to go to the last one? Well, since this is gonna be an array, we should be able to just go to tabs dot, uh, not dot, but I'm gonna do tabs and tabs dot length should give us how many total active tabs we have. And because it's an array and position starts from zero, I'm gonna do minus one to basically get the latest tab that was created. And by latest tab, we mean the last one all the way on the right. So on that, we can do again, dot bring to front. And if I run this, 
I should have probably gone to one of the previous ones before going back because we are kind of already on the last one at this point. Let's do this. Let's just take the page and activate that one. And then maybe we can wait a second and then after that go to this one. Now let's see if there is like a slip method or something to just wait a second. Wait for target. Maybe there's a wait on the page itself. So there's wait for duration. So I suppose duration is gonna be uh, in milliseconds. I'm gonna do 2000. So we're gonna wait that long and then we'll do the other one. So let's do a wait on all of this stuff. And try to run this and see what happens. Okay, so we went to the other page, waited a couple of seconds, and then we came back to the last tab. There we go. And then at this point, this will be the tab we're working with. And if you wanted this to be a little easier to work with, you will probably create a variable like this. And then after that, you would just call this latest tab, which would be similar to having this page. So now you can use your methods over that latest tab. Now one more thing I want to try, I want to see if I can do something like control click with a mouse. So for example, if you go to a web page like this, and then you go on this and press, well, I'm on a Mac, so it's command click for me, control click on a Windows, that opens the other tab, see, in a new window. Now, I wanna see if I can make that happen using Puppeteer. So for that, let me just create a separate file. And I'll just copy paste this. And here, I want to get rid of most of the stuff I did because I don't need it for now at least. I will simply go to this books scrape, which should open that main page. And here I want to be able to click on one of these links. It doesn't matter which one, we'll maybe do this one. So to find that link, I'm gonna try to find this article class and inside of that there is this hyperlink and that's pretty much what we want to click on. So here we have the selector, so that's that. And in that we have the hyperlink. I'm not sure if we have to wait for this. I don't think we do in this case because it's gonna wait for the page load. We have click options here. But I believe when I was looking at the docs, those click options were like right click, left click type of stuff. Let me just go back and check this. See, we have the left, right, middle. And it defaults to left. So we still want to left click, but we want to be able to do control left click. So let's see, where is, see keyboard. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Let's try to use that instead of shift though, it's gonna be command or control. Now I'm not sure if this is gonna handle Mac or Windows thing automatically. I guess we'll find out. So I'll just basically copy this one for now. Go back here right before the click and it seems like we have to, on the press down, we have to do control. Then I hope we'll click on it and then we'll do up, meaning we'll release the shift key. Well, in this case, it's saying shift. We actually want control. So let's go find how control is gonna work. Let's see if it's in the docs. See, it says C US keyboard layout for list of available key names. Okay, so that's not good. That link doesn't work. Uh, if a key is a modifier, shift, meta, control, alt. 
Okay, so control, maybe that's what we need to try. I'm gonna hope that it's gonna handle the Mac thing and it's gonna do automatically command, but we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna save this and run this file. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that seems like it did control click, which is see on a Mac, control click is basically like doing the right click. So on a Windows, it would have probably worked, but it did not work for me on a Mac. So I have to figure out how to handle this. Now I'm gonna try to use command and see what happens. Okay, I think we got an error. So let's take a look. Yep, so command wasn't one of the keys it can handle. I'm gonna have to go check the docs again on this. Okay, so let's see this. Matter, maybe that's the thing. I don't know, let's try this. Okay, so it worked. Apparently command is meta. Well, let's try to make this compatible for Windows and a Mac. So what I'll do, I'll go on top here and try to figure out what operating system we're on. So we should be able to do that by using the process global here, which should have, what was it called? Platform. And let me just show you what's in this. So let me just comment these lines for a second here and just console lock this. So if I run this right now, see right now I get Darwin. That's what I'm gonna get if I'm on a Mac and we should be able to get, I think Win32 when we are on Windows. Let's just go check Node's documentation on this, on this process. So here's their docs. Let's just try to get the platform. There it is. See, there it is. It's gonna give us basically this values depending on what we're on. See, we have Linux, we have this for a Mac, we're gonna get this for Windows. So I can say if we're on a Mac, use that command key. Otherwise, we'll just use control key, something like that. So I should be able to do that by doing a little if statement on top there. So I'll go here and do an if statement. Let's just do with a short syntax here. So we'll take the process.platform if that equals to Darwin, then in that case, we're gonna use that thing that I just did, which was called meta or something. Otherwise, we're gonna use what seemed to have been control. Okay, so then we'll just take that variable and plug it in in here. So let me just uncomment all of this. And instead of using this, we'll just paste that variable. So it should work now both on a Windows and a Mac. And now if I rerun this, hopefully we'll get that to open the browser window, click on the link and open it in a new fresh tab. There it is. And after we open that link in a new tab, we can then go ahead and open that tab that was opened by using the method I described. And it looks like I deleted all of that. Let me go get it from the other file. So I don't have to retype this. So again, we're gonna get the pages and then we're gonna basically get the latest page and bring it to the front. So if I just copy this, go back to this, so I'm gonna paste it over here and I don't need all of that. We'll just get the tabs and then we'll get the latest tab and then we'll just bring it to front and then you can just use the latest tab to do whatever you have to do. So let's just rerun this, make sure it works. There it is. So we clicked on it, opened it in the new tab, and then we went back and clicked on that tab to make it active. And that's a little bit about navigating through different tabs. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.
and I'll see you in the next one.